What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Art Visuals YouTube channel where you'll always find high quality visuals and high quality tech. So, you finally built your new PC and now you're probably sitting there scratching your head going, well, what now? I mean, building the dang thing was difficult enough, am I right? Well, you're in luck because in today's video, I'm going to show you every step you need to take to fully set up your new PC you just built, including installing and activating Windows 10 or 11, updating drivers, and even a couple of really cool extras that will enhance your user experience so that you can quit worrying about your PC nerd stuff and get back to clicking heads in Call of Duty. I mean, come on, that's what we all want, right? And we'll do that right after a word from our sponsor today, Light Me. Light Me is a company specializing in lighting products to enhance your viewing experience in your living room, office, really anywhere you have a screen to watch. Light Me's products have the ability to sync to your TV or monitor via HDMI and utilize AI to display the colors that appear on your screen. This makes for a seriously unique viewing experience that is deeply immersive and will really wow your friends when they come over. I just did a video revamping my entire living room setup using their products, and I gotta say, it looks crazy good. Best part, LightMe is having their biggest sale of the year, giving you guys a discount on all LightMe products on their website for the coming Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. This discount will be 20% off during November 25th through the 28th, 2022. So if you want to quite literally shed some new light on your setup, check the links in the description to learn more. All right, let's start with what to do before we actually turn our new PC on. First things first, make sure that every connector that was a part of the build process is connected. This is pretty self-explanatory, but you can always visually check your motherboard to see if your main 24 pin is connected and if your CPU power connection is connected. That's one that people forget all the time. Also, make sure that you have power running to your graphics card if needed. I know some systems don't need PCIe power, but most gaming systems these days do. Many first time builders mistakenly think they need to use the outputs on the back of the motherboard going into their monitor. Now, this is true if you're running a system with integrated graphics, but if you have a discrete graphics card, which I'm sure many of you out there right now do, you need to make sure that your output cable is connected to your graphics card, then going to your monitor or display, whatever you may be using. Now we can move on to connecting the power cord to the power supply. So simply, if this isn't plugged in, you won't get any power to your system. It only goes in one way, so that's very simple to do. From here, we need to check and make sure we have our power supply turned on. So if you look at it, there's a little switch with an I and an O on it. The O position means the power supply is off, and the I position means the power supply is on and ready. So with that switch flipped, and assuming that you built everything and plugged everything in right, including the case power switch, which we're gonna use here in a second, we can now press the power switch and watch our new build come to life. So now that we know it works, we're just gonna go ahead and turn it off again because we need to now install our operating system. You need to grab a bootable USB with a Windows installation on it. So this process is very simple and you just have to grab a USB with at least eight gigs of space free on it and then go to the Windows 10 media creation tool and follow the directions. This will then download the installation files for Windows 10 to your USB drive and let you know when it is complete. Now that you have your bootable Windows USB set up, you can then plug it into an available USB port on your PC. And finally, go ahead and turn it on. So once the PC turns on, it should boot directly to the Windows installation screen now, where you can now follow the prompts and install a version of Windows that you have an activation key for. Or you can just install the version that you want and install it for free and then deal with the watermark and limited features, but it should still work. Now, of course, I will tell you if you are in need of a Windows activation key, I have some links down in the description that'll help you get one for very cheap so your experience is no longer limited. So once you've chosen the installation that you want, you just need to choose the drive that you want to install Windows on and then click next. Now the installation will do its thing and then hit you with a few prompts after it installs with some more settings that you need to set up. And after that, you should finally be able to get into your desktop. Once you're at this point, like I said, you can continue to just run Windows for free if you want, but if you end up grabbing an activation key, again, links are down below if you guys need to grab one, you need to go ahead and search for activation settings and click on change product key. This will allow you to enter your activation code and activate your version of Windows installation so that you can have access to all the features and no longer be limited. So that's a choice that you're gonna have to make if you want to. Now, this is where I'm gonna tell you to go ahead and power the system down again because there's one quick setting that we need to tweak in our BIOS. 
Now this is the part where we want to reboot our system and mash delete F2 or F12, whatever your BIOS splash screen tells you to do, so that we can access our motherboard's BIOS and tweak a few settings. The main setting that most new builders don't even know about is to change the XMP profile for our RAM. So you have to manually do this in the BIOS to ensure that your memory is running at the rated speed that you saw on its packaging. Otherwise, you're losing performance and you probably never even knew it. So to do this, you just navigate to your RAM memory option and find enable XMP profile, which should be the rated speed that your RAM is advertised to run at. So all you gotta do is go ahead and click that and turn it on. From here in the BIOS, we can also overclock our CPU if we want, we can tweak the boot order of our hard drives if we need to, but for now, we're just gonna go ahead and save our settings and reboot into Windows. Okay, so now that we have our RAM running at its rated speed, this is the point where we can boot into our desktop and start installing our drivers to get everything running properly. First thing I personally always do is go ahead and delete Microsoft Edge and replace it with Google Chrome, but that's just me, I just prefer to use Chrome. Uh, then once I'm online, I make sure to search for my motherboard model in the, and download all of the necessary drivers, like the chipset drivers, the LAN drivers, and any other utilities that our system may need. Some companies like MSI you see here even have an all-in-one uh, suite that helps you update everything at once as new versions come available, so those are very handy to have. After the motherboard drivers are all installed, we need to make sure our graphics card drivers are up to date so we can run our games, right? So depending on whether you have an AMD, Nvidia, or even Intel, Bruh. I guess now, uh, you need to head to the company's website and find your optimal drivers for your specific card. In this system, you're seeing the video, I have an Nvidia GPU installed, so I go ahead and use the GeForce Experience to find my latest drivers and update them. This process is actually almost identical if you're using AMD and their Adrenaline software, so no real differences there. After our graphics card drivers are done, we are almost fully set up with our new rig, but there are just a couple more things that you may need to do. So the next thing is initiating new hard drives if you have them. So if you have an extra drive or multiple drives installed and are not initialized, you may notice that when you go to this PC, uh, only one of your drives shows up, and that's gonna be because that drive has Windows on it and it's the main system drive, so it's initiated uh, and it's already allocated. So for your extra storage though, you'll need to actually go to Drive Manager and find drives that are not allocated and initialize them for use. So after you do this, you'll then be able to see the drive in this PC now and you begin, begin installing games or moving files to it, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so the last thing that I will leave you with that I personally do once I complete a build is to download a couple of programs like Hardware Monitor, CPU-Z, or even just simply open up Task Manager and uh, look at the Resource Monitor by pressing Control-Alt-Delete and run a couple of tests with it like gaming or some synthetic benchmarks and just see where my levels are at and make sure my system is working correctly and the resources are being used as they should. And that's it. From here, you guys should be set up and ready to use your new PC build. So if you have any questions about this video or are confused on anything I talked about, please feel free to leave a comment below because I love helping you guys out. That's why I made this video in the first place. Also, if you like this video or found it helpful in any way, be sure to like the video for me and hit that sub button with the notifications on so you'll always know when another video like this from me is going live. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. So happy Thanksgiving to my US folks out there and I'll catch you guys in the next video.